So, what did you think? All right. Um, it's sort of. I mean, I, I saw lots of people talking about this on Twitter. Of like, um, someone just had the tweet. They said how like there's someone that doesn't watch One Division. They said every single week they see like from all of their mutuals like just timeline being flooded with like you know it's like the best episode yet and then like getting sick of it and someone just like and it was like no that's true <laughs> it's like yeah i mean to me personally at least it's like i'd say yeah this one's my favorite so far oh uh, i have to say last oh well actually it's a mixture of both last episode and this episode were yeah. both really good for me um i reckon for me at the beginning it was a little bit slow for my liking but yeah. other than that i loved the episode as its own because you and I spoke about how one of the episodes would eventually pull us back and show us the real world and I didn't expect it to happen so quickly but yeah. in a way I sort of like it because it fills in those small gaps that we obviously had and everybody was theorizing about and I spoke about this in our first um, Aftermath episode where like I love that these sort of like side characters are coming in to the story again and sort of like I call it like their skills and their gifts are being yeah. used for better and you get to see them more in like in action especially with like Darcy and even with Jimmy like being like the theorist and like detective that he is I just loved seeing all that in this episode and getting that other perspective was really interesting as well. It's sort of the way I'm looking at it with like this episode is sort of it can kind of be seen as like this and last week's episode are kind of like they're sort of like um what's the word a um uh duology in a way mm. of sort of like you know they're both like different different perspectives of like the same sort of thing and like so yeah and it's like definitely like the last week's episode is still very very close to like you know the top of my favorites but so like yeah. these two are kind of like they kind of like go together yeah they kind of go like hand in hand way. with one yeah. another and um, I'd say that, like, it's, like, just the very nature of this episode, it isn't really, like, it's not a One Division episode, and that respect is sort of more like this is, like, t taking a step back and, like, exploring a little bit more of the larger world around everything, which I'm sort of just thinking about then of, like, the idea that, like, this is, again, part of the brilliant benefit of, like, the miniseries is and so on, and it's not like a straight-up TV series where you have the sort of episodic format and like you know stick to a sort of formula it's not the same as just a really long movie and multiple parts it's because it's sort of like just the way it's set up they can do stuff like that of they can basically just interrupt the story they're telling go and tell a separate a kind of separate story that's yeah. off to the side and then just like do all of that in one go and then not have to worry about like because i imagine like say one division was a movie it, it would be the sort of thing of like they would mm. kind of balance the back and forth sort of aspect of going between sword and and westview like in throughout yeah. really but well then with this like getting to have a whole episode focus on them and then i'm guessing the next episode is going to be sort of like we probably won't see anything going on outside again for, for a while yeah for a little uh, next few for another few days i mean weeks sorry <laughs> but it's um yeah I th it's like um this is really like yes yeah, if it wasn't sort of demonstrated enough already earlier in this in the season this is kind of like really we're getting to see like the full potential of what they can do with the miniseries as, as a format so like it was the really interesting thing i um just like yeah, again another little side this all through like um most of yesterday in like the lead up to the episode premiering everybody talking about hyping up that okay we well, get yeah, this is like going to be episode in the 80s do you think we're going to see Pietro yeah it? you know we'll say what's the advertisement yeah <laughs> and it's like yeah next week that's next week yeah literally yeah. and then I think there was a there was a meme someone put up and it was like everybody after episode four when there was no advertisement and it's just vision like crying I just like yeah that was me because I literally because even at the beginning of my reaction video I was like okay advertisement probably Ultron or Pietro or probably Ultron more than Pietro and then like the tension something might happen with Wanda and the kids none of that yeah. <laughs> completely like shocked me when they like that opening was so different and just so unique yeah. And I love that they connected it to Endgame and just oh, yeah. everything going back to normal. Because I was like, what's yeah. this opening? And I was like, oh, they're yeah. doing this. And just, yeah, I like how they just like integrated like all of Monica's story into yeah. it and everything that's happened, like her timeline with the rest of the Marvel Universe timeline. So it just, it was perfect. There's the thing Mitch said as like right as I was starting, said, 
What's that? You said, what does that look like to snap it in? Or... Oh, and then it's... <laughs> But I imagine lots of people have that sort of reaction. Like, they're looking at the thing, oh, what's this? It's like, a... oh my god, yeah. And then, yeah. Like, like, yeah. But then, um, lots of people saying how it's like, yeah, it's really interesting seeing, seeing another perspective on the blip and how, yeah, like, it would have, like, because, like, I, um, I said how we've got, there's three different ways that we've seen it go down so far. We've seen mm-hmm. the, um, the heroic joyous sort of like yay everybody's back sort of version yeah. from endgame we've seen the more sort of like comedic oh shit this is this situation happening when someone comes back yeah uh, situation from far from home which there would have been a lot of there would have oh been definitely yeah compromising situations that people would have been blipped back into <laughs> and so on but then um but then getting to see like a bit of a horrifying aspect mm, to it yeah also. especially in a hospital like yeah yeah, like thinking about it, especially now, and just even yeah. when watching it, you can feel the tension because one number one, there's all these patients coming back, like you never know, yeah. like surgery or something like that, and then just all these other people who were, were visiting people are just yeah. suddenly going back into those rooms. Like yeah. that's horrifying. But just yeah. yeah, again, it's so like interesting to see like the chaos in such like a, a small confined space. It's very interesting. And it's a really good example of like once again the sort of um the like more more of an implied horror rather than mm-hmm. like sort of more visual yeah. and graphic horror. Like I was just thinking the idea of like I thought, oh my god, what if someone like what if someone had been snapped like while under anesthetic and being operated on or something, and then they've now <laughs> blipped back in in an empty ward. Yes. Where, like, oh my god. They'll open up from like you know heart surgery or something. Yeah. Oh my god. Like, yeah. Just like. So that's that, the horrifying thing of it. Yeah. yeah, just thinking about like, oh shit, hospital. Oh shit, surgeries, patients, yeah. like, ugh, yeah. But even just, you can, I think what they've done really well throughout all these episodes as well, including this one, is just tension. Yeah. Very well done just throughout it. And oh, I have to also commend the script, especially in this one. Oh, yeah. I'll talk about one part particularly that stuck with me ever since that. But with the hospital part, you can just feel Monica's tension throughout it. Because even though you're like, is it the mum she's looking for? Is it like a friend or a partner or something? You still feel that tension from her and you're like, oh, who is she looking for? Like, are they okay? Where are they? And I, I loved that. Um, mm-hmm. I wanted to talk about the dialogue because especially with Wanda at the very end, where um, she's like pushing Monica out of this realm yeah. and into like the normal universe. Like that whole thing, Elizabeth did such a great job in that whole part. Oh, yeah. I was just horrified. And the dialogue as well was so simple, but just so well done. And just, again, Elizabeth did so well to deliver it. And yeah, again, the dialogue has been so simple throughout this whole show so far. And it's just, it's so, so good. And so well delivered by everybody who's in the cast. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, Cause like I remember, yeah, what, watching Age of Ultron, I thought she is really, really good. Like she's oh, so, she was like, so like, good. The character of yeah. Wanda, I've always been like a big fan of. Same. Not really from like the um, from like sort of comics or Avengers really stuff. Really mm-hmm. from uh, Wolverine, the X Men. Same X Men, yeah. all the way. And it's like it's like she just always sort of like felt like such an interesting character to me. The idea like she's Magneto's daughter, but she's and she's potentially like one of the most powerful mutants in. The yeah, world. besides Magneto, yeah, like, she's one of the most powerful. Yeah, like she's she's someone who's like sort of she's just got a good heart and she's always like sort of trying to do the good thing trying to do a good um the good things and yeah. like sort of you know trying to be a good person but then sort of like you know finding like you know the temptation of you know using her powers to try and like you know make things perfect yeah. yeah and like you know it's like but yeah um elizabeth played it brilliantly and so good. Then just like getting to see her like just grow as an actor like through the role and like getting to see you know like just they're just going harder and harder with like all yes sort of like what, what like what she has to do as an actor like just think about it like oh from, yeah from playing wonder in age of ultron and then wanda in wandavision is like you know completely like, different yeah. almost two different characters exactly you know? yeah she, and basically she's playing a different character in every episode essentially yeah almost you know and she and doesn't so even they, have a, a accent anymore yeah so yeah then, like having to having to play the, all these different iterations of the character as she goes along and having to tie them all together in a way that they work seamlessly yeah. alongside alongside each other. And they work as all of the different things that they are of like how she can seem like both a victim, she can seem like a manipulator, she can 
seem like a comedic lead from, you know, a sitcom from the 70s or, yeah. you know, a dramatic lead in this, you know, and in this drama series from the 2020s, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's just, she's just brilliant. You know, she's brilliant, she's brilliant, yeah. Learning the, learning all about Monica and Maria as well. And it's like, yeah, yeah. there's way more connections to Captain Marvel than I was expecting. And that was really, really cool to see. I was yeah, like, that was awesome. Yeah. And um, learning a little more about S.W.O.R.D. as well, learning about some of Monica's history and everything that happened with Maria too. Yeah. And then even with Jimmy, like, get the, getting to see his sleight of hand that he's been practicing since yes. the Wasp. <laughs> oh, bless him. Like, he's so sweet. I love him. I, I want to talk about S.W.O.R.D. because it was really, really interesting. Mm, seeing, yeah. Like, the, little, the little bits and pieces we've gotten of, like, learning more about it. And, like, because beforehand all we've really seen is that Talos and Talos is what Talos his wife and Fury and I'd assume Hill as well are a part of it yeah and like the sort of um um far from home sort of time which is as I understand that sometime after when one division set based on mm. like how the timeline seem to, seem to line up it's set yeah. a few months after the blip and this is only three weeks after so this is like much more like this is kind of just yeah, before this... all of that um there was um so first of all we got the fact that Maria was basically to she was to sword what Peggy Carter was to shield essentially she basically founded it basically sort of yeah got the whole thing going and was the director of it quite a while and there's um I saw a few people theorizing about if um in Captain Marvel two we might get a sequence of because like when Carol brought um brought Tony back to Earth at the start of Endgame that was like say a few weeks after the snap or so yeah that would have been when maria was in hospital and after monica had been snapped and saying what if we get like just a little scene between the two of them oh yeah, like carol visiting her in hospital after oh monica that'll died, be nice seemingly died you know mm. but then but yeah that's um um there's the other thing i saw someone point out of like just like what well, could be just this tiny little offhand you know throwaway line about how um talking about the astronaut program that they had who saw it. yes and then someone said huh wonder if uh reed richards and friends were one of the, were some of those astronauts and then <laughs> and then it's like yeah so some someone had elaborate on that with um further theory they said okay um if like they said the astronaut program was in progress when monica was snapped and that was yeah. five years ago they said all right let's say that reed and everybody else and the rest of the four they were in space as part of the astronaut program and they got snapped or something and then they then came um when they were then blipped back it's like they then had to find their own way back yeah. to Earth or something and then probably in doing so passed through the cosmic radiation cloud gave them their powers then yeah possibly. and but um because then it's sort of um yeah bit of a tangent here but sort of like that's fine sort of thing, <laughs> thinking about the sort of thing that they could do of like the the fantastic four in the mm. mcu i've always thought that what i would want to see is focus less on the superhero aspect of them because mm. it's sort of like they're not like the premier defenders of the earth like they do um, a lot of space missions yeah. rather than staying yeah. on earth and so i was thinking that's the aspects that they should push about them mm. in the MCU for the I next feel. one yeah and also as a way to like sort of distinguish it from the other adaptations of them in the past is mm. do something where like have like this sort of like this kind of like classic sci-fi um sort of feel of like the sort of the sci-fi adventure sort of aspects of like it's like get that kind of Jules Verne sort of vibe almost mm. of like sort of every story is like every other time every other um fantastic four movie or something is the story of like okay they're going on this kind of expedition they're going yeah. to this far off place either <laughs> in, be it another dimension another planet or somewhere like atlantis with Nemo and so on and like sort of they're like going away to this like far off corner of reality and then finding themselves in a situation where they've then got to help people out there. Yeah, because like, I think they really yeah. need a, a refresher for Fantastic Four. I think it's just as easy as, for example, with Peter Parker's story to do that repetitive, like, origin story over and over again. And I think it's getting to that point where people are like, okay, we know what happened to the Fantastic Four and stuff. Yeah. Like, if they refer to it in the movie that's coming, like, yeah, that's fine. Of course you have to refer to it because that's how they yeah. got their powers. But, like, yeah, I would love for them to just jump into, like, 
an adventure yeah. straight away and just drop us in there and I'd just be like I'm in for it because I love the Fantastic Four but just like yeah I, I I want something new with it and sort of like the vibe you were saying just a, a really good adventure story yeah off planet underwater anything I just yeah. I would love it I really like the meta aspects that they got through this episode of like, oh um, yes when Darcy and Jimmy are, like watching back all of the different episodes and then those um people were talking about on um on reddit saying how it's like um there's it's yeah um uh marvel studio spoilers it's the subreddit i mean it's basically mm. like a kind of you know like talked about um star wars leaks before this is basically like that but it's sort of like you know oh you know, nice and it's um it's sort of um there was a thing of like people saying how it's like i basically every single thing that they said of like any of the sort of like theorized bits they mentioned you know and the show is like, yeah, that's stuff that has been like actual comments here, like in the over the past few weeks or so. Yeah, especially um, like with the whiteboard thing, that was like as if it was sort of like, yeah, again, meta, like talking back to the audience, like, yeah. what's the hexagon mean? What does yeah, it all I mean? I was like, that's you and me sitting yeah. here every week. This is what we do. And even just the internet, it's like, what are the hexagons? What is this? Yeah. What is that? Oh, I love that little like thing. And then they said something else. I can't remember. The, but that was just such a great thing. And I feel like everybody would be like, oh, fuck, we're getting called out right here. <laughs> <laughs> I like that um, we actually very, very briefly did get a bit of a look at like, what well, one of the things tying together all the hexagons is of the, um, there's a few bits where they showed like a thermal imaging map of like oh, looking yeah. down on the town, looking at the field, and the field is hexagonal. It's not round. Oh it's my like, god! I oh I yeah. forgot about that too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I saw that was yeah, lots of people sort of like um having different theories. What it could be about is like you know something to do with the Infinity Stones, six mm. of them, something to do with six six six. Yeah, know, Mephisto. But then I saw like those simple thing of like someone saying, well. Wanda's powers in the comics are referred to as her hex powers. Hex, yeah. So it's, That's another thing like too, that. yeah. I was still like kind of in two minds of like the whole idea of like, is Wanda doing this? Is she, mm. is is it all someone else? Is it all her? Is it a mix of the two of like someone has put her in here, but then she's sort of like taken to it and taken so sort of like, you know, trying to like, control, sort of yeah. keep it together. And at the moment I'm feeling like it really is sort of like, mostly all her mm -hmm. but i think there'll be something else to it I yeah I, I have another theory that i wanted to talk about as well um i might as well skip to it because i wanted to talk about it i actually took a page from your book and i visited reddit for the first time i've never done it and i was like you know what i'm gonna do some homework and i'm gonna check reddit so what i did was um i have the pages here because i need to refer to them because they're yeah. just long posts um but we're going to skip ahead in the episode, but the whole thing with vision and just yeah. his body, ugh, that, yeah. <laughs> that was so scary. Cause yeah. when it happened, I was like, is it just me or is that coloring off? I was like, yeah, I, know, I yeah. kept, I wasn't even looking at Wanda. I was looking at him. Cause I was like, that's weird. Is it I, I was like, Oh, something's wrong in my eyes. And then she turns and then he's just like, yeah. Mm, yeah. I was like, Oh God. But then I went on Reddit and I was reading uh, I'm just going to read what someone said. She's uh, Someone said, this shit just got 10 times creepier if she's holding around an animated corpse. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit, what if it is? And then someone had said right underneath that, someone mentioned that a cutscene from Endgame shows Vision's body being stored yeah. with sword um, and the director left to check that it was still there. So I'm actually in favour of this theory being right. Maybe Wanda is using her powers to give life to Vision and it's actually giving... Uh, actually him to some degree one thing that i thought instead was that um especially kind of linking back to the what my um my theory was from last week which is mephisto um she may have gone to mephisto and asked mephisto to give life to vision instead of her giving life to vision because that's not really her. that's what i was thinking and then but then i was thinking where is mephisto in all of this he has to be watching what's going on and then i went again on reddit and i looked and someone said that Mephisto obviously can shapeshift. And the first thing that he ever shapeshift in the comics was a fly. So then what if he's been animals in every single episode? So oh. then I went back and in every single episode, there has been an animal so far. Yes. Yeah. Because in the first, I got that theory right here too. So what did she say? She said, um, the lobster, the rabbit and the stork. Yes, yeah. So she, they were yeah. saying, what if Mephisto is the animals in the, each episode? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, 
Oh, maybe. Because even I went back and I was like, is it true? And I looked and in Earth, I think, which, which one was it? I referenced it. Earth 616. Yeah. That's when he first ever appears and he's a fly. Yeah. So I was like, oh, maybe. So I don't know. Maybe he is. But again, linking back to Wonder and the whole thing with Vision, imagine if the body is not even just like, it's not even an illusion. What if it's Vision's dead body and yeah. she's just, yeah. that's terrifying and messed up on all yeah. levels yeah there's it's like it's part of the, it's like you know so brilliantly done in that it's we get we didn't didn't get we didn't get an answer there and in that moment we just got like a sort of like suggestion that has then got everybody like sort of yeah everybody can interpret that in so many different ways and like yeah so people saying how it's like it could be that he is like to to how you know Wanda sees he is just like his sort of like just normal vision like we mm. see him in the show it's just like in that moment it's like thinking back to the real, to the mm. real world she sort of saw that's him true as, as well yeah uh, for what he is of you know he's basically just a ghost essentially and then it could be that he is you know that's vision's corpse that she is like uh weekend at bernie seeing herself for someone described yeah him. but then um that's like i i personally kind of I feel it's some a little bit of a mix of the two and like i like the kind of really macabre sort of theory of like um because like uh, you mentioned before um, when you mentioned um making a deal with a feast i saw people um talking about that as well i just um it's just like when you mentioned it then i remembered there's um the bit in remember in deathly hallows part one oh harry like, potter um, yeah, yeah there's the whole thing about how like um the um so the Deathly Hallows were made mm. from like they were from a, a pact with death that yeah. these people were made, and all of them are like they do, they do something that's supposed to like sort of grant you this ultimate witch wish, but with a catch. And yeah, like you know, there's like it's sort of with something that shows the falseness of it and the artificiality of it that like you've achieved this thing, but it isn't real. And so mm. and I thought maybe, what if that's what it's like with Vision is like. He doesn't know that he's dead. He doesn't know that he looks like that. When he sees himself, he just looks normal. Yeah. He is sort of brought back to life in a way. But to Wanda, he and to anybody else that like doesn't see the illusion, he just he just looks like, you know, his he looks- dead body. And so oh! just, she's then just having she's just like willing herself to look past that and to ignore it that because like, Yeah, that would be cool. Because I think it's the second Deadly Hellish as well. I can't remember yeah which which is it the stone resurrection stone yeah, yeah, yeah the, the guy who had the resurrection stone went mad and yeah. eventually killed himself because yeah. he wanted to be reunited so yeah. we're not going to get that dark with one division yeah. but yeah. wanda i mean this could lead wanda being mad in terms yeah. of just trying to keep that perfection and becoming obsessed and getting sort of like locked yeah. in her own head with this own reality so that would that would be really cool to see how far they take it in terms of that because already a lot of people just like this is such a dark show even yeah. though it's just little things it's still yeah. so like the the meaning of everything is so dark in terms of the concept it's so good the way that they've handled it um but yeah it's yeah. Mm, mm. Uh, that's the other <laughs> thing i saw people saying as well they said it's um uh the show and especially this most recent episode and the whole scene of vision they said that's really set an interesting precedent for multiverse of madness and yeah like I said if that's going to be like it's described as like it's going to be like a horror film then you're like okay but like in what way in what way is yeah. it going to be like that it's like because i know that um back when scott derrickson was still um in charge of it he said how the kind of feel or approach is sort of going for is something like indiana jones or something where it's like Ooh. we get these big sort of like sudden shocking moments of horror essentially but overall it's not like like Temple of Doom isn't a horror movie, mm, yeah. But it does have all of these like you know macabre, disgusting moments here and there. Yeah. That sort of like just add to like the creepy feel throughout and so on. And he's, but then <coughs> Sam Raimi in, in charge. So like it's sort of it's interesting. Like <laughs> I know that people was, when when he took over, there was people thinking, okay, so is it that Scott was going too hard on the horror aspect mm-hmm. or not hard enough or like, because it's like, yeah, yeah, this is Sam Raimi behind the Spider-Man films. But there's also Sam Raimi behind evil dead and so on. And like, and it's like Derrickson. But I think they're a, trying to find that bar, balance, I guess. Yeah. I reckon it's going to be this sort of, this kind of tone of like, kind of like in one division of like, mm. sort of like just be getting 
these little bits and pieces of like you know sort of um like you know it's like the the enemies they face the situations they find themselves in it will be this Mm. all like all these sort of horrifying i know lots of people saying it's um i mean i haven't seen any of the evil dead films yet um hoping to at some point but um lots of people are theorizing that army of the dead is the sort of feel kind Mm. of it's like it's not like a straight up horror sort of story but it's like it's kind of like the situation of like these people fighting against you know these sort of horror themed threats yeah i feel a bit more like it's not like it's more like a thriller like jump scares and stuff like that but not too not too much in the i guess like horror horror aspect yeah Yeah. but i want to see how far they go with it though especially because i want it to be true if they bring mephisto in then they can take it to a whole nother level so oh i i wonder what they're gonna do and i just hope that they um i guess find the right balance because again it is a marvel film and i wonder what's going to be rated because I mean, yeah. kids are gonna watch it'll Doctor be, Strange, be, but it'll be rated. It'll be um rated M slash PG thirteen, yeah. but like, but like, but scary. You but know? scary Cause PG, like, yeah. Because like, I mean, because what One Division's rated PG, PG, not M, Ooh. but like PG, and it's like, because it, I mean, it's the sort of thing. It's like, it's not graphic. It's not, no. you know, it's like, it's just sort of shocking and yeah. like sort of and creepy. You know, yeah, it's creepy more than yeah, yeah it's than yeah. jump scares or anything like that. Yeah, and it's a sort of um, it's like a good a big part of it as well as kind of like a lot of the more sort of existential fear that sort of like would kind of be lost on like a younger audience and so on. Like mm. I'm thinking like the vision scene for like a lot of the kids would just be oh this sort of like you know kind yeah, of jump like, scare oh. Of like oh yeah that's like vision look like <laughs> when Thanos um, mm. took the took the stone out of him yeah then everybody else then thinking further and thinking yeah it's like <gasps> okay time is yeah. this what how is this how you know he doesn't see that he himself looks like this and that he himself is dead mm. but you know oh imagine if like yeah the the like the like the magic fades for a moment and he sees himself in the mirror and he looks like that yeah I think like that what would happen if like um will vision be the one that um sword are able to connect with him rather than trying to connect to wanda Ooh, or something. yeah and maybe he's he's the one to sort of like kind of bridge that gap and sort of like be their inside man so to speak mm. and um i know there's lots there's some people have been theorizing as well about the idea of um the idea of like sort of kind of like a sort of gradual kind of trouble in paradise sort of storyline forming as like sort of by the end of it, it by the end of it basically turns into marriage story almost of like sort of Wanda <laughs> and vision are kind of like he's trying he's trying to save Wanda from herself yeah and, and like, she's like trying to here. make she's this perfect to, yeah and she's trying to so like just you know keep him locked into this reality yeah. so that she can have her perfect life here yeah. There's the one thing as well I saw um it's like a I think I've I've seen this theory um said a bunch of times like sort of over the past few weeks and I like, just haven't got around to mentioning it on here but there's the one I've seen people talk about of um the idea of like the sitcom setting mm-hmm. of the show and like sort of where part of that comes from the idea that uh when Wanda was growing up in Sokovia she was like she would watch reruns of old American sitcoms and so on oh. and then that to her has then always been the idea of like when she pictures a sort of like perfect family life and so mm. on, that's what she thinks of. That's brilliant. Yeah. If so, that's cool. Yeah, I like that aspect. That yeah. actually makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Said one of the things of, um, it's a bit when we're cutting back to Jimmy writing down all the stuff on the whiteboard. One of the things he writes down is that it's his theory that's the scrolls. He said, I think it's scrolls. I think those scrolls are here. <laughs> or something. <laughs> that's something to do with them. But, um, but yeah, it's, um, I know there's the other thing people are pointing out as well, that, um, I don't think Agnes is on the board. That's the thing. That, like they, that's they all, have... that's one thing I forgot to mention. Yeah. She's yeah, not on the they, board. Yeah. They, were, I, they managed to identify everybody else, but they couldn't identify Except her. for her. Yeah. And, and Dottie as well. Who they couldn't <laughs> identify. The Which one was Dottie? Um, she was the blonde woman though. Like, oh the, yeah. Who friend. could she be then? Yeah. If she didn't come was... on the board. It's the other thing that um saw people pointing out of like could just be like a just a brief little aside or like you know it's sort of like something that sort of it felt too kind of like it was sort of just there but like mm-hmm. kind of not elaborate on the episode might get elaborated on later mm-hmm. where 
at the bit when Wanda was with Dottie right before Jimmy tried to call the radio. Yeah. Um, Darcy says, yeah, she's here with another character. And then Jimmy like, tries to correct her, you mean another person? And it's like, no, this this isn't someone that we've been able to recognize. So she's another, is she, is she a real person then, you know? Yeah. And like, Interesting. It's the other thing as well, I suppose, that's, I hadn't even thought of that actually. Like, okay, so Dottie broke, the, the, the vase broke and cut her hand. Her blood yeah. was, was like red. And so far, the only things that have, like, sort of broken the fourth wall in that aspect of things have come from outside the field. Yeah! Like, things like the helicopter and uh, not the, not really the beekeeper. No, but, yeah. Like, you, know, you were right about the beekeeper, though! Yeah. <laughs> you said that in episode one, and you yeah. were like, that's going to happen. And yeah. there, another theory you were correct on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right away when I saw it, I screamed right off. I was like, Alex is right! <laughs> <laughs> but back to what you were saying, sorry, yeah. about the blood. So yeah. It's like, so, I'm, it's like, I reckon there's definitely something more to Dottie, I think. And, like, just the fact, like, it could have just been, like, a oh! bit of, like, reality glitching out a little bit because Wanda was mm. hearing Jimmy's voice on the radio. But then why was it that, specifically? And why was it, you know... But, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. Now I'm th- oh now this is so annoying because like red who's red yeah <laughs> exactly that's why now I'm confused I'm like oh god yeah. <laughs> what if it is yeah. I feel no nah, no I feel like five hundred people in the feast are now <laughs> yeah. could be anyone could be a fly could be an animal I don't know <laughs> yeah it's um I reckon it's sort of it's something that I think they'll will be like a, bi- a big part of the show and I kind of like we already in a in a meta way got to see a lot of that throughout mm. um, this episode of um yeah this will be the sort of show where like after the final episode if you go back and watch all of them again you'll it'll see make sense these, yeah it's like every single like other scene you'll go oh my god this is referencing this which is referencing this which is connected to this yeah and it's like it's ah like, okay yeah. yeah it's one of uh, those shows <laughs> have to watch it to the very end <laughs> but I don't know uh final thoughts final thought so next episode probably hopefully it's the 80s episode (laughs) that we've been waiting for um what's gonna happen okay advertisement jumping into that um i think it might be ultron yeah just because we've had two hydra ones so i feel like the next one is it has to be ultron yeah i'm thinking i just had like a kind of a random thought i thought if what if it's like Something like um um like an ad for a, an ad for a for a home um, for a video game console or something like a home console where it's so sort of like you know it's like Ultron's voice is like sort of like <gasps> one thing in the ad like like um I don't know if you've seen like the the Power Glove ad like which I've, I've seen it before just on YouTube so like just shared around it as a meme yeah um like sort of like it's this ad where um it's like. So it's a, a kid playing on the Atari, and then it's like the, it sort of comes to life as like a robot, and then he sort of has to fight the robot, and then so sort of, you know, it's sort of something like that. Maybe that'll yeah, be so, so like, cool. There's the other thing as well. I mentioned, um, I forgot to mention this before, but oh, yeah. um, talking about vision and mm-hmm. vision corpse, it's all this like simple thing. Someone pointed out of like going along a theory of Wanda puppeteering him. They said, "Oh, we got a fun little." Nice little sort of callback and inversion to Age of Ultron that you know, Vision Vision's just a puppet tangled in strings right now. Mm, like, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was saying like they already like because they're uh, like you know referencing Pinocchio early on. With, Dude, the f- with I have to say Ultron. I never got to say it because I wasn't doing reaction thing, but that's genius the way that they yeah. reference Pinocchio because yeah. it was so creepy but so cool. Yeah. Like, makes sense. <laughs> It's the other fun little thing about that that um I remember uh, Guillermo del Toro was doing a, a Pinocchio film. I think it's stop motion animated for um, oh. Netflix, and um he's been that's like a pet project of his. He's wanted to do for years. I know. Yeah. I think it was like back in two thousand and nine. He was trying to do a live action um, Pinocchio film, and Robert Downey Jr. was going to play Geppetto. <gasps> So I think that's another little thing of like they were just like having a little reference to that as well. Oh, just that's like so cool! The idea of yeah, Ultron as Pinocchio, then Tony Geppetto. Yeah, uh, um, <gasps> that's, 
That's true. Oh my god. I never looked at it like that. That's so cool. But then um but yeah, so it's like so like you know, Ultron was like he's sort of he still saw himself as like you know even as like as powerful as he tried to create himself it was vision was the one that he wanted to be like sort yeah. of really going going beyond any of that being his own person not being you know controlled by anyone which yeah. again, is exactly what happened and that he rebelled against ultron and mm. decided to not be controlled by him and just to like follow his own heart and so yeah on. and then now it's then things are going back the other way and then i think there was um i was mentioning that to mitch and he said you know this is his like sort of personal little like theory of an idea of how how they could have james spader turn up or ultron turn up in some way they said just Mm -hmm. imagine a moment of like vision is just looking looking at himself in the mirror he still looks sort of normal so like to his eyes he's sort of like but he knows that like sort of something's off yeah something's wrong so like he's so like trying to realize and then just like you just hear the voice from off screen say just like how disappointing what you've become and then just like you know, having a little moment like that, or something. I noticed the other thing people have theorized as well, of um. So there was like the last Ultron, right? The one mm-hmm. that's like just the really damaged drone that Vision goes and faces at the end of Age of Ultron. Yeah. And he blasts him with laser from the Mind Stone. Some I saw someone, and like this is apparently a thing that had been theorized like since um Age of Ultron. But I just like never really heard about the idea. It was saying that they always feel like he didn't. Try, he didn't destroy Ultron then that's not sort of that's not the sort of thing he'd do Vision's not that sort of person to kill even yeah like not Ultron. really yeah and but instead having it more like he just sort of absorbed and contained him into the Mind Stone or something then back from from whence he came and so on and then so then that's like along the similar lines of like Mitch was suggesting the idea like he said what if like yeah Ultron's still kind of He's in there like a little seed of him in a way he's sort of like he's just kind of possessing vision's mind there's like a little bit of him still in there somewhere that would be like, so like, cool and the same deal is kind of like with um the joker in arkham knight and like yeah you know, but yeah i think it's because because i mean yeah again who knows there's so many different ways yeah there's there. so many things that can happen <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, see you again next week and for the children. For the children. <laughs> Bye everyone. Bye. <laughs>